Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of your weekly news roundup here on the Stando Mania channel. I, of course, am your host, Stando, and we've got just a little bit of news uh, for you this week. I do want to apologize. I am filming this around noon on a Sunday, so it's going to be dropping your inbox a little late. Sorry for that, but let's get into the news. First thing I want to talk about today is arguably the biggest news of the week, and that is that Fallout New Vegas 2 is reportedly in the very early talks at Microsoft. This comes to us from the Video Game Chronicle. Uh, of course, Jeff Grubb uh, talking via podcast uh, that with some insider information this is a very early but people have begun talks and say these words and sentences and those words are obsidian in new vegas too uh, according to grub that's a quote from grub uh, we're talking years and years away there's at least an interest in conversations happening about making something like that actually a reality of course a lot of gamers speculated when uh, a lot of fallout fans speculated that when microsoft made that bethesda uh, acquisition that they already had Obsidian. Maybe this is something that they could work on in the future. And it looks like there, there's a lot of demand out there for that product. And if you look at how uh, poorly received Fallout 76 was, and if you look at how Fallout 4 kind of got hate later on, like initially it was awesome, but then for some whatever reason, gamers kind of turned on that and don't like it so much. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird situation that Bethesda finds themselves in. Uh, and yeah, this will be awesome because Obsidian, of course, if people did not know, were the original developers of Fallout, Fallout 2 and Fallout New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, of course, when it released, they were given like 18 months to release that game and it came out in a very buggy state, but the story was so good, right? The concept and role was so good that people overlooked how buggy that game was and kind of gave them a break, especially since, you know, that game was developed in such a short time. What can Obsidian do with a Fallout New Vegas, right, that, like, it, they have plenty of time to work on? You look at, like, uh, The Outer Worlds uh, and how good that game was, although relatively short. Can they do something like that? Uh, of course, again, we're talking many, many years in the future because we know that they're making an Outer Worlds 2, and we know that Avowed, you know, which is kind of like uh, Obsidian's take on the Elder Scrolls series, uh, you know, like their their idea of what a high fantasy first person RPG would be. Um, that's coming out first. That's coming out before Outer Worlds 2 and then you got Outer Worlds 2 on top of that. So how many years down the road does this game come out? Uh, it's, it's hard to tell at this point. We can only speculate even if it does speak itself into reality, right? So it'll be a long time before we see this game. It's just a really cool story that at Microsoft, they're actually talking about it, and it's very early talks. Not even pre-production, just talking about it. That That's exciting that, uh, that it'll be a possibility one day. And then you look at Bethesda, when's their next Fallout game going to be? Because, you know, they're releasing Starfield this year, and then they got Elder Scrolls Six, which is probably going to be four years from now maybe five years from now. So when do we get the new fallout from Bethesda? You know, how long uh, are these games in development? It's, it's an interesting uh, thing to look at. The next biggest news is Call of Duty 2023 delayed by an entire year. Uh, this uh, is crazy uh, when, when you hear about it. This is according to Bloomberg, of course. According to... To Jason Trier over at Bloomberg, Call of Duty 2023 is going to be taking an entire year off. Uh, and that's not happened in about 17, 18 years, right? So um, kind of crazy to think about. Uh, now, Call of Duty 2022, Modern Warfare 2, and Warzone 2 have already been confirmed for this year. So this will be Treyarch's outing. And so Tra the Treyarch game's delayed by a year, and to fill that gap to to fill out the rest of the year there will be another free to play new ip uh that'll be releasing that year instead uh according to the report and that's wild so i, I know a lot of people are you know 
kind of, you know, well, Call of Duty needs to take a breath and, and, and this, but, you know, these games are in three-year development cycles. There could be a little bit of franchise fatigue and maybe uh, the fine-tuning of the games from iteration to iteration aren't as stellar as the developers and as the players would like them to be. We, we seen that with the Vanguard being poorly received. Uh, we also saw that, you know, Cold War, um, Black Ops Cold War was using the older engine instead of the 2019 reboot, uh, Modern Warfare reboot uh, engine. So maybe to fine tune these things, get everybody on the same page, on the same sync, and and actually push forward will be. It'll be exciting to see what the future of Call of Duty is uh, going to be. Now, if you were thinking that this was because of the Microsoft acquisition or the future acquisition of Activision by Microsoft. Uh, you can put that to rest. Apparently, this is coming from Activision themselves that they want to take a year off and, uh, you know, better polish the franchise. So good on them. Finally, I guess, you know, it only took them, you know, 17 years to, you know, realize that, hey, games need to innovate. Uh, so <laughs> I'm still excited for uh, Modern Warfare 2 and uh, Warzone 2 simply because we know that those are going to be running on new engines, which is uh, amazing also because we just got a new engine for Modern War Warfare uh, 2019, and it doesn't feel that long ago. And Modern Warfare 2019, to be honest, felt like a new Call of Duty experience, and it's the first game in a long time that felt that way to, m to me, in my opinion. And it seems like, uh, the response to that was overwhelming, and that's probably the future uh, of Call of Duty, is giving this engine a refresh every few years and then putting out a new Call of Duty that feels really tight, really good, and like it should, the next evolution of the game. There's always fine tweaks, weapon balancing, all that stuff to go through that you can't really do if you're releasing a game uh, year on year, you know three-year crunch or or whatever so we'll, we'll see how that goes and our last story of the day is of course elden ring released this week it's currently holding a 97 on metacritic with a user score of 7.6 that's for the playstation 5 version of course across all the versions that i've seen so far uh it's being held in high regard and and high standard but that's not to say that the game doesn't have its flaws, especially here in the beginning of its life cycle. Uh, users on Steam are uh, criticizing how poorly optimized the game is. So if you're seeing a user score that's uh, clearly mixed on Steam, that's what's going on. The game is, you know, not stable, not running at 60 FPS or not maintaining the 60 FPS, especially on uh, RTX 3080 cards, which it should be easily handling. Uh, there's uh, just poor optimization on that end of the game. And then on the PlayStation 5, you have some frames, some frame rate stuttering, not as bad as the PC version. Uh, but, you know, you have people saying that it's better to play the PS4 version than the PS5 version right now because of frame rate. But at the same time, there is a corrupted autosave feature. Like if you let your PlayStation go into rest mode or turn it off, turn off the game without a hard saving, you can, could get corrupt save files. Um, so if, if you're playing the PlayStation 5 version, Make sure that you're manually saving before you get out of there. That way you have save game to jump back into. Um, now, that being said, Bando Namkai or from, Soft from software, they have they have addressed this, right? They, they know that these are problems and they say that they are working really hard, very diligently on a fix that should be coming out soon uh, to alleviate all these problems. Uh, they're investigating the frame rate reports. Uh, they think they know what's causing it, and it should be an easy fix. Uh, and the uh, same with the uh, PlayStation saves. They know what's causing it. Perhaps that they can get a patch out very quickly. Um, this is just something that got by the QA. Uh, they, you know, it happens. Uh, this isn't game breaking in any way. Uh, and hopefully that patch comes out pretty soon. And uh, gamers can yet again rejoice. Yay! Right? All right, let's talk about the games that are coming out this week. First, we got Elex 2 coming to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC. That comes out March 1st. This is a game that, you know, 
Uh, when Elex One came out, it looked like a pretty cool world that people wanted to spend time to. It was a little jank, <laughs> uh, and you know, it wasn't. It, it was more like budget title RPG, not like uh, you know AAA status. So it, it'll be it'll be fun to see how they build on uh, this universe and what to expect from the game going forward. Uh, hopefully, it's you know they fix a lot of the problems that they had with the first game, and the second game is just you know a definitive uh experience uh over the first game uh far changing tides comes to the playstation 5 xbox series x and s playstation 4 xbox one nintendo switch and pc march the first puzzle quest 3 coming to the pc ios and android that comes out march 1st shadow warrior 3 what the hell? comes out to the playstation 4 xbox one pc march the first babylon's fall PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and PC, March 3rd. Um, and then we have Gran Turismo 7. Look, guys, as a hardcore Gran Turismo fan, I am glad to see the series going back to its roots after sport. You know, we didn't really get a good Gran Turismo game uh, last generation. Uh, we got Gran Turismo Sport, which was, it was good. It was, it was good, but, you know, there wasn't that, that single-player occupancy really there they patched that in later there wasn't the the classic tracks there was a lot of content that it felt like it felt like Gran Turismo Sport was missing a lot of content for you know what it was and now you've got Gran Turismo 7 which returns back to that single player simulation but uh, and allows you know the the career mode for you to upgrade your cars it brings back a lot of features that were missing like the used car shop uh it also brings back uh a lot of the classic tracks and a lot of that content that feels like it was missing from gran turismo sport while at the same time still offering that online experience that gran turismo sport mode to have these races uh online and, and in a competitive uh, race environment which is very awesome and I, I i am so hyped and psyched on gran turismo 7 it feels like a long time since gran turismo 6 so to get a proper gran turismo totally excited uh triangle strategy um comes to the nintendo switch march 4th this is a game that kind of reminds me a little bit of like final fantasy tactics or something like that uh with that q octo path traveler uh you know chipset that 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 graphical look that you know 16-bit uh, era look that looks really good um and i'm sure a lot of people are stoked on that triangle strategy comes out march 4th that's all i got for you guys this week uh if you enjoy the video if you like having these little discussions around the news uh don't forget to hit the like button also leave a comment Tell us what your thoughts on some of these stories are down in the comments below. And if you're new here, of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, I stream on Twitch five days a week over at twitch.tv slash stando. Make sure you come check that out. Again, guys, I love your face. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll catch you next time. Until then, have a good one.